Hey y'all, Joe here, Southern Coast of Cooking. This is uh, part of my mini series on brisket, different steps and cooking the brisket. I'll break it up for y'all so y'all can see it in several different videos. You don't have to watch the whole thing. I just did one on selecting the brisket. Now we're gonna do trimming the brisket. And this is a USDA Prime whole packer, okay? I don't make fun of my nice pink gloves here. Ran out of my good black gloves, so I had to open up a sampler pack that my wife had. So uh, anyway, what we're gonna do here on the fat cap side, now I'm doing too, too much. I'm gonna take some of the, the real thick, thick fat off, okay? Go down through here and just give it a check and just uh, see how I'm going along right here. Just kind of gauge checking the fat. You don't want to take a whole ton of it off. See right there? That kind of broke through to some of the meat. So I don't have to go very deep. That fat's not very thick. But I just want to go through a little bit like that. Now, let me flip this around so you can see the other side. I want you to see how there's some uh, little dark spots on here. Sometimes this is some ink from the stamps where they stamp the meat. Uh, other times it could be some of the wet aging, whatever taking place. Of course, there's no smell to it or anything like that, but it just, it's just kind of unsightly. I want to get that out of the way. Again, just be kind of careful around there. You don't want to cut real down into the meat because um, this does, some of the fat does offer some protection. But the way that I'm going to show you all how to grill it or smoke it in the next video or so, you won't really need much protection. Here's a flap of fat over here. Hopefully y'all can kind of see that. Just wiggly old fat. We don't need that on there. You know, let's just kind of trim that up a little bit. I don't, I'm telling y'all, I don't do a whole lot of trimming on my brisket. I really don't. I get some of the deep, deep hunks of fat out. Let me show you right here. Hopefully y'all can see right when I was pointing. See that big old, there's a big glob, knob of fat right there. I may take that, put that kind of out of sight and out of mine. Kind of round that tip off there, that big huge chunk. See that got in a little bit of meat. So I'm gonna stop that and just trim it right there. Okay. Now, I'm gonna flip this bad boy over and go on the other side. Uh, one thing a lot of people like to do is just to where it's, it's aged there in the bag. Sometimes they wanna get this down on the sides to the bare meat. That's not a huge deal, but okay, you know, if you want to take the first little layer off, you can, and just kind of shave down through there. So there, and it's, it's easy to do this. I never, I don't want to ever freeze my brisket if I don't have to, but, you know, I put the brisket in the freezer for about 15 minutes or so, you know, from the refrigerator and just get, get a really good chill on it. It kind of hardens up this fat. So now we're over here. I'm going to get over to the lean side of the brisket, okay? Flip this. I just got them on this towel. To, I want to make sure it's real dry while I'm doing this. Now this right here is a big, thick layer of fat. Tactfully, I want to try to get underneath there with the knife and remove some of that. But you don't want to take a bunch of meat with you, okay? So what you want to do is kind of work your knife underneath there as you peel it back. Again, that's a, that's a layer of hard, hard fat. It will not really render when cooking. I wish I could bring y'all over my shoulder here. Maybe I can flip this around and kind of show you what I'm doing for a second. You see there, I'm pulling that back there and just cutting in there and just folding this fat back. It's really hard to do here on camera like this, but you can get the idea, okay? You just slice. You kind of fold that big fat cap back. I'm gonna have to turn back around here because I don't want to cut myself or gouge out a huge chunk of meat. Maybe y'all can see some white there. But uh, that's what you want to get this big old hunk of fat right there. We get it up here, okay. Keep going. They said we can always cut more fat out. Can't put it back. <laughs> Put the meat back, really glue it back on. Then I'm gonna go along over here. Now, obviously, I wouldn't do it away like this and come in on the other side, but I'm gonna kind of cut down in there 
I will basically fillet this big hunk of fat out of here if I can. Okay. Let's see. If I can do this. Normally I keep slicing like I was over there. I'm trying to do it so y'all can see something on camera. And I don't want to put my hand in front of the knife. I always want to be real careful about that, y'all. Especially when doing something like this with steel. I've got one of these uh, cold steel commercial series knives here. This sucker is sharp as a razor. All right, now, y'all can see what I'm doing here. I'm just lifting this bad boy on out of here. Okay? See, that's all that flaky, dry, white fat type stuff. Don't need that. And I would have done a better job and not had to you know, flip it around and stuff, but you get the idea. Okay? That's a big hunk of fat right there. It would not have rendered for you. All right, that's why I say if you got a huge mound when you're picking out the briskets, you don't necessarily want to get that because then you waste you a lot of a lot of uh, brisket. Now, what some people do, they'll get in here and they'll gouge out further. Now I've done that before. Now I've kept on going because you know the idea is you don't want to waste your bark or your rub getting on fat. It's, nothing's going to happen, you know. You're not going to eat, or that uh, you know, season's not going to get down to the real meat. But I tell you, I don't get too worried about it. The Zinnia gouge, a big, huge hole, and you have this giant dip, and you tend to get just a pool of liquid in there. Kind of tends to cook unevenly, okay? So I got that out, a lot of it at least. What you want out of that area. Now, see some of this fat up here? Or mainly if there's some silver skin up there, just get underneath that with the knife. You can trim that a little bit because this is where we want to develop that wonderful bark. You know, for the flavor. Real good stuff. So I'm going to kind of take some of these pieces off, just pull it up. I don't have to go too crazy on it. And again, like I shave that other side. I may shave this side just a little bit. I may go down through here. And shave some. I'm gonna be able to shaking the whole table now. See there? That just big hunks of fat through there. Don't really need that. Shave some of that off, okay? But again, you don't want to uh, sacrifice all your meat. Now, see, that seems to be a lot of fat in there that I can do away with. But a cool thing about it is, as much fat that's down here on the flat, it's going to help to preserve this stuff. We're not really drying out the flat. Yeah, I like the idea of that. I really do. So, I think this was pretty much trimmed up, y'all. Um, trimming the brisket, going pretty well for us. So, uh, if you can just see, like you said, take mainly this big piece out here, thin your fat cap out some. Trim around the edges. You know, this isn't a competition. This is for cooking at home. You want the good stuff for your family. Okay? Take some of these uneven, just gnarly little pieces off there. And uh, you just kind of play it by ear. Or play it by ear. Play it by, by sight. What you see that just doesn't look good. And you want to trim it off, you can. But like I said, don't go too crazy with it because you need some of the fat to help the brisket cook. So I hope that helps y'all. Uh, next video, I'm going to do it on seasoning up the brisket. Thank y'all so much. Y'all uh, keep watching my channel. I uh, like my videos, sub my channel, and y'all check uh, Southern Coast Cooking out on Facebook. Give a page a like. Thank y'all.